As I think back on my, my life, I assume to be 82 years old, and I remember when I, before I was saved, I used to wonder, you know, I'd see people raise their hands and get all, exci all excited about Jesus, and I didn't understand that. I thought they were a little on the crazy side. <laughs> but you know, as time went on, I couldn't figure it out in my mind at all. And God knew I couldn't, and no man can figure it out. But when God touches you, you'll know it. When God touches you, you'll know it, and you'll be different. I used to think about when I was young, how many remembers their first, their first puppy love? Your first puppy love, you know? Boy, this is it. You know, you felt, really felt different, you know what I mean? Wow, man, this is it. Glory to God. Two days later, it faded away. <laughs> well, I had a few puppy loves in my life, and they all faded away. <laughs> and uh, one day when I was about 19 years old, I walked into a Western Union office, and all of a sudden the light turned on. I couldn't figure it out. I didn't understand it, and I didn't want to understand it. Probably mess it up if I tried to understand. But all I know is when I saw my wife for the first time, I fell in love with her. And I figured, well, wow, so this is really it. I figured, well, maybe two days later it'd fake away, you know, but it never did. Sixty years of marriage, and I love her more today, but I, can, I cannot explain to you this invisible substance called love. But I tell you what, I woke up this morning, that morning, I remember that. I woke up that morning with Susan on my mind. <laughs> oh, you young folks are out there, you don't even know what I'm talking about, do you? One day, though, ah, oh, it'll beam on you. <laughs> Don't try to understand it. You just flow with it. Yes. It's the most wonderful thing in the world to fall in love if you're a girl with a man and a man with a girl. And you won't understand it. All you want, know is you want to spend your life with that individual. Is that the way it was with you girls? You know, you met your husband. This is, this is it. An inward change, an inward change, not a psychological, mental, soulish thing, but an inward change in your heart. Man, that girl, I love that girl. And um, so I asked her out for a date once, twice, three times, four times. I, had, I was in the service. I had to go to Amarillo, Texas to school. But I wrote letters, my first letter I wrote there. But you know, it never faded away. That love is stronger today than ever before. I can't explain it to you. I don't have to explain it to you. It changed my life. And I wanted to be with her. And I, and I love to please her, you know. Then when I got 26 years old, Susan and I married a, a, a girl that she got saved when she was 14. And... She loved Jesus. And I said, honey, I thought you loved me. <laughs> well, I love you and Jesus. The reason I can love you is I love Jesus. And uh, I sort of a little jealous on that, you know. But anyway, they'd go to church. And I'd get mad. My little daughter, about four years old one day, looked him in the eye and said, Daddy, why don't you go to church? with mom and me. Well, I ain't got time to go to church. I got things to do. I don't believe in all that foolishness. Well, one day I made a mistake. I went to church. And I can't explain it to you. It's just like when I fell in love with Susan. All of a sudden, I wasn't seeking God. God was seeking me, and he found me, and a light went on in my heart and my mind, and all of a sudden, 
Boom! A supernatural experience with God Almighty, who is supernatural. And I received Christ into my life, and my life changed from that point on. And I never thought I would become a minister or a pastor, but that happened too. So when you're born again, that's what Jesus said, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. I don't care how much you want to believe or you don't believe, don't make no difference, God loves you. But when the light turns on, you see. You see. And the Bible says you're translated out of the kingdom of darkness. See, that's why you cannot see, because you're in the kingdom of darkness. That's, that's the kingdom of Satan. And he translates you out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of the Son of God. And now you're in a brand new kingdom. Christ is your Lord and Savior. You begin to read the Bible, understand what life is all about. You understand that, that, that we are in a time zone down here, and you've got maybe 70 or 80 years to live, and you're going to pass on this life. But for a Christian, hallelujah, it's a new beginning of eternity with God. Yeah. I've often said, if you can believe this is true, why doubt anything else? But I understand why people doubt and don't believe, because the Bible says Satan has blinded the unbeliever from the light. People that don't believe have been blinded by Satan, an evil uh, angel. But when God comes and shines that light, that darkness comes off your mind and your heart, and you can see the spiritual is as real as the natural. But until that happens, you'll argue, you'll fight, you won't believe, you'll just go along living a miserable life. But when the light turns on, just like when you fall in love, hallelujah. When you fall in love with Jesus, hallelujah, it happens. So let's get into the Bible and, uh, <coughs> excuse me, and let's see what I just said. If there's any scriptures to back that up. Uh, put uh, Ephesians chapter 2 verse 1 on the board please. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 1. It'll be up on the, on the board. Charles is going to put it up there. And we'll read a little bit about that. Okay, here we go. It's up on the board. And you, he made alive. Isn't that amazing? Well, that means he made you alive. You were dead at one time. You were blind at one time. You're dead. You didn't know God. You didn't know nothing about God. In fact, you resisted God. You didn't believe in God. Is that not true with all of us? All of us was atheists. <coughs> we didn't believe in God. How could we? We were dead in our sins. We were blinded by Satan. When you were dead, slain by your trespasses and sins, you were dead towards God. You could not know God because you weren't born again. But notice this, when you were like that, he made you alive. At a certain time, boom, boom. He made you alive and you saw him. You saw your condition, that you were lost. And then you saw what the Lord did for you. He made you alive. That means you can now fellowship with God. You are now alive spiritually. See, when man is born into the world, he's dead spiritually. And that's why he has to be born again spiritually. All right, let's go to the next verse. Verify this out in which at one time you walked habitly, you were following the course and fashion of this world, where under the a sway of the tendency of this present age, following the prince of the power of the air. And who is that? Satan. Satan. So we were all following Satan. And we were lost and we didn't know it. 
But God made us alive. See, God initiates this whole thing. See, we struggle and we fight and we do all of that, but eventually he breaks through, see, and he makes us alive and then we can really see what the Lord has done. Now, you were obedient to and under the control of the demon spirit that still constantly works in the sons of disobedience. That's those that do not believe they're lost. They were born that way. We were born that way. That's why we understand them. We came from the same group. The, uh, the careless, the rebellious, and the unbelieving who are against the purposes of God. It's amazing when you see people fighting God and they don't even believe in God. Why would you fight against someone that you don't believe in? That you don't believe that, you ex that he exists? That's r ridiculous. <laughs> Why not just relax in the whole thing? <laughs> but we know deep down there is. See, God has put that in every man to know that there is eternity. Let's go to the next verse. Verse 3. Among these we are as well as you once lived and conducted ourselves in the passion of our flesh. So we were all alike. Our behavior governed by our corrupt and sensual nature, obeying the impulse of the flesh and the thoughts of the mind, our cravings dictated by our senses and our dark imaginings, we were then by nature children of God's wrath and heirs of his indignation like the rest of all mankind. So we all start out there. But God in his grace. Now let's follow this on down now. Look at verse 4. I love it. Mm, 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 mm. But God, so rich is he in his mercy because of and in order to satisfy the great and wonderful and intense love with which he loved us. Now I want to stop for a moment. If you can grasp the love of God for you, the greatest is love. We sit here today and we all have some degree of how much he loves us. Folks, I'm telling you, when the full impact of how much God loves you. I know we've all grown a little bit, but you will find yourself growing rapidly when you really can grasp how much God loves you. Unconditional love, not based on your conduct, not based on whatever, nothing has, nothing has to do with that. He loved us while we were yet sinners. How much does he really love you? You will become so secure, you won't talk about nobody, you won't gossip about nobody, you won't put nobody down, you will be so secure in God's love. Absolutely. Quiet in here. <laughs> you can smile, it's okay, you know. You know. No sleeping aloud now. Open your eyes. I want to see your little eyes. See what color they are. Ah, oh, there she is. Yeah, 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 I see that. When I, people, when I see people doing this, that tells me something. That, that's a manifestation I'm quite aware of. I'll make him think I'm asleep. That way he's not, he, he, I ain't paying no attention to what he says. I mean, no, I love you. Huh? Oh, I'm telling you, there's a place in God. I mean, as we grow and mature in God, oh, you reach a plateau of understanding. You reach a plateau of life. You re reach a plateau of communicating with God 24-7. Someone says, yippee dippy doo my sins are forgiven. And that's wonderful. But how much fellowship are you having with God 24-7? I told the men in the class this morning, when you woke up this morning, what was your mind on? What was your mind on? Ham and eggs. I'll ask you the question. What was your mind on? Huh? 
Is he talking to me? He ever talking to you? I'm talking to me too. I woke up this morning with Jesus on my mind. I woke up this morning with Jesus on my mind. I woke up this morning with Jesus on my mind. <laughs> Come on, you can laugh. It's okay. We're not mad at nobody. God's not mad at nobody. If I can get people to understand that. Oh, my goodness. Now, let's finish that. This is powerful. No, his intense love, which he loved us. So many people feel rejected today. These poor kids are shooting people. I'll guarantee you could trace it down to rejection in their life. Nobody will notice me. I'll do something to make them notice me. Bang, 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 bang. So sad. But that's the philosophies that the enemy puts in the minds, not just our young people, but some old folks too. Have you ever seen any old folks real crabby? Huh? Who said yes? <laughs> One, two, three. Buckle. Anybody got a husband in here that's real crabby? Now, don't get me wrong, I don't like crabs. <laughs> Anybody having a wife in here that's crabby? <laughs> now, don't look at your wife, men, that's not nice. <laughs> here comes the old crab. They used to say, here comes the old lady. But see, when you understand how much God loves you, <clears throat> you become complete as a human being. You know, being healed is one thing, but being made whole right. is what God's after us. Right. I hope somebody's listening. Let's read on. Ha, ah, this is great. Remember, God is so rich. Even when we were dead, under control of Satan, there's thousands of people out there are under the control of Satan. They don't believe. They don't understand why they don't. Well, we do. They're under the control of Satan. Dead, slain by our own shortcomings and trespasses. Now, when we're in that condition, I want you to see something. He made us alive. <coughs> what could we do <coughs> to make ourselves alive? You're dead. Physically, if you were dead on the floor, you're dead. You can't move, you can't think, you can't taste, you can't do nothing. You're dead. And God comes along, makes you alive. Whoop! See, people don't understand they're dead spiritually. That's why they can't believe in God. They're dead. A dead person cannot believe. How can a dead person believe? But in that condition, God so loved you, he made you alive. You'll know when you will be made alive because you'll wake up this morning with Jesus on your mind. That's right. <laughs> oh, you think I'm kidding, brother. I've lived this thing for many years. Hallelujah. I had a, and I'm not bragging and I'm not complaining, but he that tooteth his own, he, he that tooteth not his own horn, it won't get tooted. So I'm going to toot my horn. Toot, toot. We had an email. Come, here you go, I'm tooting my horn. You know, Paul explained about...
fight. You know that, don't you? When you read the scriptures, they, they, they explain, you know, what they were once, and then now I'm this, and I had a thorn in my flesh, and I divorced her, and I'm just trying to wake you up. Just kidding there. I'm just kidding there. But this guy, this guy I knew about 40 years ago, gave me an email. Evidently, he's, people are checking on our email and all. And he said, Pastor Bob, you might not remember me. Well, I remember him real well. How many is too hot in here? How many is too cold? How many is just right? Can't have that. He said, I've, you have had such influence on my life. I've never seen a man with so much love that loved me when I didn't believe, when I was out like God loved me, like God loves us while we were yet sinners. He says, I'll never forget you. Your life has had more influence on me than any other person I've ever known. I got the email over there. Not bragging, not complaining, but our lives should reflect Jesus. We got so much to shout about. You know, sometimes we read about <clears throat> because of the disobedience of one man, we all became sinners. We were all were lost. Uh, we were all under the control of Satan. Our minds were blinded by Satan's power. And then God made us alive, showed us our condition, and caused our spirit man to be born again, and our spirit man became alive, and now we can see God. For God is the spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. And our spirit became alive, and now we can worship God. The reason people don't worship God is because their spirits have not been born again. That's very clear in the Word of God. Now, let's finish reading that. Mm. Even when we were dead, slain by our own shortcomings and trespasses, He made us alive. Everybody say, God made me alive. God made me alive. And folks, if God has not made you alive, you're still dead. I'm just telling it like it is. But God loves you. God loves me. God loves us while we were yet dead. Mad at God. Mad at the world. No joy in our life. Walking around like we're sucking lemons. The Bible says, Bless envious is the man whose sins have been forgiven and taken away. Happy is the man. Envious are we. That had all our sins taken away. Look what that says up on the board. He made us alive together in fellowship. Did you know how I know you've been born again? You'll pick that pencil up. <laughs> Just kidding. Thank you. Am I talking to anybody? Amen. Anybody understanding what the Spirit is saying? Yes. All right. Gosh, God loved me when I was doing all those bad things. But now that we're His children, how much more will He bless us now that we are His children? Now look at what it says. Everybody look at the board now. Let it get in your mind. Let it burn in the recesses of your being because there's life in the Word of God. Shortcut and trespass. He made us alive together in fellowship. They shall know that we are Christians by our, our complaining against one another. Somebody say, ouch. 
Tell it like it is, Bob. I believe it will. But I know nobody does that in here. Notice, us alive together in fellowship. If you're not having fellowship with the body of Christ and members in the body of if you're not having fellowship, something's wrong. Didn't hear one amen. The love that we have for the brethren is the biggest test that you'll ever come. Now look what it says. Made us alive together in fellowship. In fact, he raised us up together to sit with Christ in heavenly places. See, it's a gathering thing, folks. It's not running off and hiding from the body. Let me get out of here as quick as I can. But it's a gatherness, a unity. And God works that into his fellowship, into his people. And in union with Christ, he gives us the very life of Christ. Woo, my goodness. He gives us the very life of Christ. You know what life is? <laughs> yippee dippy do. Life. Life. Joy. Unspeakable. Life. Jesus is alive. I'm alive. Say, I'm alive. Go ahead. It won't hurt you. Hey, you alive. Yeah, I know you were all the time. Life. How much is Jesus bleeding through you? Depends on how much life is coming through you. Life. Look what it says. He gives us the very life of Christ. You didn't work for that life. You didn't grunt for it. You can't buy it. God gives it to you when you make a decision to accept what the Lord has done for you. That's simple. It's not complicated. Notice what it says. He gives us the very life of Christ himself and the same new life with which he quickens him. That is God quickened Jesus from the dead when he was raised. To put, for it is by grace his favor, his mercy, which you did not deserve, that you are saved, delivered from the judgment, and made partakers of Christ's salvation. So it's all because of what God has done on our behalf. And as we hear the message, we're either going to reject God's love and salvation, or we're going to accept it, and our lives will be changed by his life that he gives to us. I'm not talking about religion here. I'm not talking about rules and regulations. I'm talking about a personal relationship with God through Christ Jesus our Lord. I have a personal relationship with my wife. And I enjoy it 24-7. She went shopping the other day, and I couldn't hardly wait till she got home and brought me that hoagie. <laughs> it's okay to laugh. How many goes to the football game, huh? What do you do at the football game? Anybody else? My daughter has one of these bells, and she, gets, she sits right behind me. And no wonder I'm deaf in one ear and I can't hear out the other. Have you ever sat by somebody with one of those bells? Yeah. Huh? The kids love those bells. Where's my, my cowbells back there? I ought to get it. Give you a demonstration of that. I said, honey, please. Anyway, I love her. All right, look what, the, look what the Lord has done. Chose you before the foundation of the world to save you and bring you into his family. Well, I don't want to be in the family of God. Well, all right, okay with me. Then you're in the family of Satan. Take your pick. You got a will. I've read the book. I'd he'd rather be in the family of God because the family of God's going to live forever in resurrected bodies. I'm not going to tell you what's going to happen to the family of the devil. 
It's bad, I tell you that. There ain't no exit once you get down there. And that ain't God's will. It's not God's will that any man should perish, but all should come into his family through Christ Jesus our Lord. But the decision is ours. We have to make that. Aren't you glad you made? If you're glad you made the decision, raise your hand. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Well, Bob, how do you know God exists? How do you know that you exist? Maybe you're a blimp on the radar screen. How do you know you exist? Duh. Well, I get hungry. <laughs> I get sleepy. I had a young man tell me one time, Pastor Bob, I don't believe in anything I don't see. So I said, I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll get a ladder, put it right up there, and we'll screw that bulb out. You go up the ladder, put a little juice right on your little finger. In fact, put, it, put your foot in this little water right here, and put your finger up in there, you know. I ain't gonna, he said, I ain't going to do that. I said, why not? He said, because electricity would shock me. What, I don't see nothing up there. You said you didn't believe in anything that you couldn't see, so stick it up there. He said, no, I ain't going to do it. Why? Well, I can't see it, but I know it's up there. Yeah. I can't see God, but I know he's up there. Amen. Amen. Because he put his life in me. So you can't strain for it. You can't work for it. God initiates this whole thing. We have a wonderful God. And to be able to know the things that we know. All right, I'm going to let you go here pretty soon. I know you're getting hungry. I hear Willie's stumble growling back there. All right, go to the next one. Mm, mm, mm. And he raised us up together. I don't know if I like this together stuff. I like a little room. No. Togetherness is what God does because then if there's anything in you being together it's going to touch that little thing in you that's ugly. Get quiet in here. And at this side, that they sleep. I'm going to walk over here. And I How many is touchy? We got one touchy. Rick, are you raising her hand or, or, or are you just patting her? you just patting her and say, I love you, honey. All uh, right, just checking. How many is touchy in here? One. We've got one honest person in here. We've all been touchy at times, haven't we? Don't you touch my piece of chicken. Huh? Well, you see, when God puts us together, the real you will manifests and we'll just see how much love of God's in you when somebody you're together with don't do what you think they ought to do or did something that you thought you should have done or what how many how many how many love me well you still love me Willie really loves me thank you Mike thank you thank you so God puts us together. He raised us together to sit with Christ in heavenly places. Oh, I love this. Given us joint seating with him. Can we understand the power in seating, seating with Christ in heavenly places together made us sit? I like that word. Bob, yes. Sit. I want to sit. I want you to sit together with the body of Christ. I don't want to sit. I ain't going to do it. Notice this. 
be, just represent God for a moment. What did, what did God do? Made, made me. Go ahead, make me. Oh, come on, make me. Sir, would you please sit down? Make me. Go ahead, make me. I don't want to sit with other people. I want to be by my, want, I don't, don't, I don't, what you go do? Please I ain't going to do it. Make. I can't make you. Yes, you can. That's what the word says. Well, then you got to follow the word. <laughs> make me. Go ahead, man. I ain't going to do it. Hey, this ain't so bad. Made me to sit with the saints of God. God, I got all kind of feelings manifesting about this time. Look at that sister looking at me over there. I see that elder over there looking at me. All right. Thank you so much, sir. Appreciate it. You made me sit. And you know what? And you know what? I love yeah, it ain't that bad to sit in fellowship with the saints of God because, see, that's a covering, that's a protection. They can't get to me because you're in the way. <laughs> so surround me. See, there's a benefit of being togetherness. There's strength in number. And there's more with us than did. All right, let's go. Look at what it says there. <laughs> to, Given us joint seating with him, with Christ, in the heavenly spree by virtue of our being in Christ Jesus, the Messiah, the anointed one. That's our position. We're seated with Christ in heavenly places. That's why we're more than conquerors. He conquered it for us. And he made us to sit in heavenly places. And that's where we're seated. And we're to reign and rule in this life right up there against principalities and powers. All right, let's go to the next verse. <clears throat> he did this that he might clearly demonstrate through the ages to come the immeasurable, limitless, surpassing riches of his free grace, his unmerited favor, and his kindness and goodness of heart towards us in Christ Jesus. Uh, you've heard me say this before. You want to win me? Be kind to me. My wife is so kind to me. She has won me by her goodness to me. Now, how many of you understand what I'm talking about? Because we know her. <laughs> yeah, we, <laughs> I went to the bank the other day. They didn't say... Oh, Pastor Bob, it's so good to see you. You know what they say? Where's that beautiful wife of yours? <laughs> I said, she's getting her hair all fixed up for me. <laughs> you look at him like that, they probably freak out. Can we understand that when somebody's good to you, but here's what we, here's what many times, no, I'm not, I, no, I'm not really worthy to receive that goodness, but I want to be your friend. No, you might find out about me and not like you. No, I like you. I don't care how, you, how ugly you are. I don't care how mean you are. I'm not saying that you're ugly now, but I'm saying I'm using you as an, uh, an example. I love you because, see, the love of God's been shed in my heart, and I can't help from loving you. That's it. No struggle. 90% of the time you don't do what I want you to do, but I still love you. <laughs> See, that's real love. Anybody listening? You're listening. See, so, so take your axe and throw it away. Don't have no axe to grind. Just love people where they're at. I remember when I used to, uh, before I was saved, and the devil had me uh, but good, and I'd come home drunk. Susan was good to me. This woman had a husband that did not want her to go to church. And uh, she said, well, honey, you know, I'm going to go to the church because I love the Lord, and that's what God wants me to do. And 
so I'm going to go to the church. He says, well, if you go, when you come back, the door's going to be locked. She said, well, I'm going to church. So she went to church. She come home, the door was locked. So the next morning, he wakes up, he unlocks the door, opens it up, and she's out on the porch asleep. She gets up, and she says, honey, what do you want for breakfast? (laughs) And went in and cooked the breakfast for her husband. Can we understand that type of love? See, that's God's love. That's God's love. It's not what you did or didn't do. God is love, and he can't help but loving. That's his nature. And when the love of God is in you like that, you can't help from loving people. That's just the way it works. And it doesn't mean you have to agree with everything they say or everything they do or don't do. You just love them for themselves. How many wives just want to be loved for themselves? Speak to me, girls. Wave at me. Sure, that's it. Sure. And us men are learning to love our wives, even though they they make good, can cook good fried chicken. We ain't kicking that a bit now. Coconut cake. What else can they make? I don't know, but it is making us hungry. (laughs) Anybody understanding what the preacher is saying here today? I want you to leave this place not mad at God, not mad at anybody. Just thank God for what God has done. Receive it by faith. And give God a chance in your life to show himself that he's really real. You'll never know that he's not real until you meet him. And when you meet him, oh, let me tell you something. You will be a different person. See, I'm I'm not speaking out of none experience here. You got to look at me. I'm 39 years old. Or is it 80? Oh, 82, almost 82. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Some folks don't want to taste. I don't want to be proven wrong. You'll be proven wrong either here or the day of judgment. But you're going to miss out. People miss out on a lot by rejecting their creator. Now let's move on to the next verse, and we're going to let you go here pretty soon. So we're saved by grace through faith, not of works, lest any man should boast. For it is by grace, unmerited favor, God's love, God's kindness, unmerited favor, that you are saved, delivered from judgment. Now, we will stand at the judgment seat of Christ to be judged and get rewards for what we've done in the flesh down here. But as far as our judgment goes whether we are saved or unsaved if we have received christ there'll be no judgment for there is no condemnation for those that are in christ jesus see when you're on this side of the cross in your loss you're under the law you're under the law And people are trying to do good. They're trying to do right. And they fail, and they fail, and they fail. But when they get saved, God takes them out of the kingdom of darkness. We have died to the law. And we come into the, with Christ on the cross, and we died with Christ on the cross. We We are not married to the law no more. And we are over here on the resurrection side. And now we have the lawgiver living in us that directs us and guides us and gives us the power to keep the law. Hello, church. How many Christians are still over here and they're still feeling like they're under the law and condemn every time they look wrong or, or think something wrong, the condemnation comes because they still see themselves. No, no, the Bible says we died to the law. The law is not dead. We died to the law when we died with Christ. Can you understand that? Yes. That's powerful. That will set you free. 
because the lawgiver, the Holy Spirit, lives within us and he directs us and guides us and he will even show us things to come. What an experience it is to be born again. No wonder Jesus told Nicodemus, you will never see the kingdom of God unless you're born again. And people don't understand this walk with God because they haven't been born again. They're blind, blinded by Satan himself. We've just read the scriptures a while ago. But God in his grace and mercy has revealed himself to us. And now we've been saved, justified, just as if we have never sinned. What a gospel, what a message that we have for mankind. All right, let's move on real quick and we're going to close. All right, where do we end up there? All right, here we go. Now notice this. And made, partaker, and made partakers of Christ's salvation through your faith. And this salvation is not of yourself. You didn't earn it. Of your own doings. God initiated it. It came not through your own striving. So quit striving. <laughs> but it is the gift of God. Let's see if I got a hundred dollar bill here. My wallet won't come out. We'll get it out. <laughs> I'm so glad Susan's not in here. Now, let's see. Let's let's make this interesting. Should I go twenty or ten? Twenty. Twenty. <laughs> this is a gift. You can't earn you can't earn it. You can't earn this. You can't earn this. You can't earn this. You can't earn this. But I tell you what. I'll give it to you. Awesome. That's wisdom. <laughs> First smile, I keep, I keep smiling for me. Son, I love you. I'm the best friend you'll ever have. You remember that. It's as simple as that. Just receive what the Lord has done. Yeah, but Bob, you got to do this and you got to do that. Yeah, you will, but you'll do it under a new power. You'll do it under the power of the Holy Ghost. And if you don't do it under the power of the Holy Ghost, it's dead works. Right. Preach it, Bob, I believe it will. Man, what a deliverance. What a deliverance. Wow. Wow. And? Wow. Just, oh, come on. And? Wow. Oh, wow. What a salvation. No wonder Paul says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation. A free gift. Eternal life is a free gift. And it comes through Christ. That young man did not have to work for that 20. Susan had to work for that 20. <laughs> and I'd love to give her money away. <laughs> Do you love me this morning, church? I hope I did something for you. I'm here to help you, not hinder you. Let's pray. God, if there's anyone here today that wants to receive the free gift of eternal life, the free gift of salvation, it has been provided for them 2,000 years ago through what Christ did on the cross. And when we yield and submit to that, Lord, you do the rest. You come into our lives and you change us from glory to glory by your spirit. Thank you, Father, for that. In Jesus' name, amen and amen.